Welcome to the Network Engineering Video Blog. I am your host, Michael Crane. In this second half of our two-part video on config file open, we will be using Microsoft's interaction modules called by name function to set the properties at runtime in our class node objects and class link objects. All right. We will introduce a new key value pair class used to help parse the config file. And we will look at modifications made in our Windows, in our main window code behind node class and the link class. We will also discuss the three reasons why the code was written with refactoring and interaction. And basically the reasons are single file to add, change, and delete properties. Uh, dynamically add properties to a class and give the user the ability to add runtime custom properties to nodes and links. It's very cool. So let's get started. Okay. So in the last video, if you remember, we were uh, implementing the file save and file save as, right? So in this video, we are going to <laughs> implement the opposite of that, or I don't know if it's opposite, but uh, the, the fruits of our labor with the file open. All right, and we're gonna get our config file, which is a text file, and open it. And I, I'm sorry it's running a little bit slow. It's, it's my uh, screen capture software <laughs> that's making it uh, kind of chug along, so you'll just have to bear with me, okay? Let's go take a look at the open test bed now. One of the things to note, it's got a, I'm instantiating OBJ as just a generic object. That's so we can put uh, uh, different object types in it, okay? And you'll see here in a second, nothing real fancy here. Got a stream reader. Uh, here's our little key value pair class that I like using. And so the first thing is uh, get config. This should, <laughs> should probably should be like get config line or something like that because it's just getting one line. And we'll jump down here to get config real quick and just look at it. And this is a pretty simple little function. It's just returning this uh, this key value pair class, and it's just uh, it's just using read line. And so just saying, okay, if it's uh, if the line is not nothing or then, uh, oh, if the line is nothing, then that's, this is the end of the file. And that's why you probably noticed I have no spaces in here. Spaces would probably make it look a little nicer, but I'd have to fix code, and I didn't really want to do that right now. It's not that important. Yeah, so, and then this else if is, if it's got a start or an end, then we're just going to trim the spaces off the line and uh, set the value and, and put that as the key and set the value to empty string. Or if it's got an equal signs in there, which means it's a key value pair, uh, then we're going to split it and put the first part of the split in the key and the second part of the split into uh, the value, trim them all up, and that's what we're gonna return, the key value pair class, right? Uh, else it's going to catch all, it's just gonna put two blanks in there. Or if it gets an exception from this read line, because it can throw IO exceptions. It's just gonna send an end of file back to this guy. And so, you know, once we get the C object back, this KVP object back, we're going to, you know, look, okay, as a key, uh, Cisco router start, Cisco router end. We'll just start from the top real quick. I won't go through all these. They're all pretty much the same. So it says, okay, if a key is like Cisco router start, set this generic object to a new Cisco, Cisco router node. Okay, and this is why I had to put Cisco router start, <laughs> or Cisco router, right? So I knew what kind of uh, child class to instantiate of, out of our class node parent, right? So, okay, so we got the new, new node. Okay, so then it goes, it might be better if we look at the file. So, okay, so we found the Cisco router start. Okay, this guy right here, right? And so once it gets this, it's gonna drop out drop out of this loop, and then it's gonna loop back up, and it's gonna go get another line, and, and this line is gonna be name equals router, okay? Well, it's not gonna match, you know, any of these start or end statements, right? 
So it's gonna drop all the way down to this else right here. And this is a, something that I put together using this call by name interaction function. Okay, and this is one of Microsoft's public module for different functions. And, and this is a handy little, little object. So anyway, let's start from the top. So if the key's not null and the, and the value's not null, then and it's gonna drop in here to, um, you know, set the key value to the key and the, and the value value to the value. And I guess I didn't really need to do this. I, I just did it to make it easier for me to read, even though it's fairly easy to read anyway, isn't it? Okay, so if key is like name, then um, then we're gonna do this call by name object. And don't confuse the name, the call by name and the name name. <laughs> they're, they're two different things, right? And so this call by name, if you look at them, so it, what it does is, as you pass it an object, there you're, the object you're trying to manipulate, procedure name, okay, and the call type, what you're trying to do with it, and, and any arguments. So here's our object, here's our key, which is our property object, right? Well, it's not in this one, it's the name property, which actually isn't in here. <laughs> anyway, so name is actually a, it's a user control property, which is, it even inherits it from something, another, I guess this controls object or something. I, I forget where it inherits it. But I had to um, kind of peel them out because a name is it set somewhere else. And you'll see, so call by name, the object is our node object that we assigned, our, our Cisco router node object. The key is name, right? The call type is set, so this is a property, so we're going to do a set on it. That's what I was showing you earlier in the properties. And then we're gonna set its value. And that's all I'm doing is I'm just going through all the key value pairs and setting them in the, um, the object. So let's look at another case. It might be a little easier to look at. So, okay, so index equals zero, right? Okay, so it's gonna fall down here. The key is index, the value is zero. And it's gonna come down to this, this guy right here. And here's, so it's the object dot property. So it's, our object is still a node, our Cisco router node. But now we're gonna set the property object inside the Cisco router node with the key, the function we're calling is set, and we're gonna set its value. This little function is just gonna go through every one of these key value pairs until it gets to the router end. And when it hits the router end, it's just gonna add that node that's populated with all the variables into the collection nodes, right? Okay, and it's just gonna go through this whole file until it gets to the very end down here. And then we will get the end of file. Then it's gonna close our stream reader. And if the collection of nodes is greater than zero, it's gonna return true. And if it's, if it's equal to zero or less, <laughs> it'll be false. Does that make sense? So yeah, so this uh, call by name thing, we can look at it just real quick. You can Google it yourself if you want. It's uh, interaction.callByName. Here's where it talks about the object, required a pointer to the object, exposing the property or method, the name, a string expression that containing the name of the property or method. So it has to be a property or method, right? And then the call type, it can either be a method, you know, like we're calling a function or subroutine, or if it's a property, you can do a set or a get. And that's why I made that little class. And then their arguments, of course, are what you're trying to do with it. You're trying to set a value or, or get a value, that sort of thing, right? And that's the reason why I made all these members properties, right? Uh, so we can do a get and a set on them, mainly a set at this point, okay? I hope that makes sense. Yeah, so once it hits the end of this, it, this is what gets returned, this return to, return false, back to our our main window guy, right? This open file. This is this is where he's getting the um, the return value from this open test bed, right? Okay, and to finish off here, um, let's go back in our, our diff, and just to go over this. So we did add this, this property prop <laughs> as a class node properties. And just basically removed all the all the properties from the the class node, right? And put in its own little object. The same way with the link, the class link here. Yeah, so it's it's exact same thing. It's just using the link properties class. 
Also on this class link, uh, the set location, I had to add in class node and, and set endpoints, I had to add in, in class link. And I don't remember, did we, we didn't look at set location in the class nodes. Oh, okay, well, might as well start from, from this guy here. Class node, set location. And, and just feed it the, the left value and the top value that we got from the config file. Go look at this guy real quick. Yeah, so here's a, so it's the top left corner that we're setting the uh, location with, all right? And that's all I'm doing is just set left, set, set top. That's pretty much it. And so on the class link, um, it's a little bit different because class link doesn't have a set location. The way it was instantiated is I would do a new, add new link, and I would pass it, this is when we were provisioning at the main window, I'd pass it the uh, A node object and the B node object, which are the two endpoints basically of the link. Each set is, is A node and B node, and this wasn't here. And then he would draw the link because he had all the information, you know, the, he could get the location from the A node and B node. So now if we do a, you know, do an add with a new, we have to populate this property which is a string, A node and, and B node, in our property class node, or sorry, class link properties file. But when we're doing this open, so we're doing this open test bed though, we're not getting that. We're just doing link start, the object's a new class link. So he's not passing any endpoints, right? So he's using the default constructor, uh, this guy right here, right? And so, none of this stuff is is getting set so i had to add this subroutine in here which is set endpoints mode uh this open test bed populates the collection of links right and then the main window as he's going through all the links in the collection of links he's adding the links to the canvas okay and then he's calling the set endpoints and he's passing in the name the string name from this properties file of node a and node b and and then this guy right here is just going through all the nodes and saying, okay, if node A is like cn.name, he's just basically assigning node A and node B. And then, then he's calling this draw link. I really hope this all makes sense. Um, if you kind of go through it, you'll, you, you'll understand. It's, it's pretty straightforward. It, it's just like I couldn't call this constructor. Uh, I couldn't pass it in a node object because we didn't get an object out of the text file, obviously. We only got its name. So somewhere I had to resolve the node into an object for the link, and I figured this was the best place for it. I don't know. There might be other places that are better. If you have any comments, let me know. And a couple other things I should probably point out. So on the class node, I, I changed well, where's the diff? I, maybe I talked about this already. I don't remember, to be honest with you. Anyway, I changed this um, this function from get location to get center point because location is actually the top left. As you see here in set location, it's, it's the top left. And this get location function was actually returning the middle point and not the top left. So... I changed his name to get center point, just a little housekeeping. And of course we added this set location, which we already talked about. So on our mouse move, I also, or I'm sorry, when we move a node on our canvas, this is where I set the, in the properties file, the left and the top portion of it. So you might be asking yourself, you know, why make this so generic like this? You know, why use reflection and this? call by name and have to create a whole new class just to hold the, the properties. You know, why, why go through all this? And there's, uh, there's, there's three reasons why I'm going down this path. So one of the things I, I like about this is for the links and the nodes, between the link properties and the node properties, anytime I want to add another property for a node, no matter what kind of node it is, it's just for the base class node, all I have to do is add it in one spot. I don't have to update any of the I.O. 
I don't have to change anything as far as opening files, closing files, uh, saving the configuration. All I have to do is just uncomment this guy and in fact we can do it. Let me just uncomment him, uh, save it, start, and let's see, file open. Okay. Now if I do a file save, I'll do a save as. I'll just call them um, something test. All right. Let's open this guy. And there it is. See? Automatically added it to to our config dot our config file that it saves off. You might be saying, well that's great, but you still gotta import it, right? Well let's try that or import it. You still gotta, you know, open it back up. So I'm just to show you that it's gonna work. I'm just gonna go ahead and X out of this, start a fresh one, brand new, file, open. And uh, here's our config.test, open. Now granted, <laughs> you can't really see the host name in there, but it added. Actually, we could probably if we look through the, uh, the de debug window here, so. Oh, here we go. Here it is right here. So see, hostname equals hostname. And if I did a file save, it would just save it back off. That's pretty nice, right? I don't have to touch any of the IO opening, closing, or saving files. All I have to do is just add this property to the class and it's automatically there, okay? And you might be thinking, well, that's, that's pretty nice. That's pretty great. But what about the user interface of GUI? And that's something else too. I don't have an example to really show you. When we come up here and do a, an edit, right? Which doesn't really do anything right now. I'm going to try to make it where it just goes and pulls up all the properties, you know, and what they are, strings, integers, types, and just builds a GUI based on what's in this file right, or what's in this class right here, right? And so then I wouldn't have to even change the GUI. All I have to do is just add a property to this class file, right? That would be pretty sweet. So, but the last thing, uh, and this is a what if, what if we could at runtime dynamically add these properties to this class node, okay? Now you're following what I'm saying? So at runtime, let's say this, this wasn't here. Let's say it wasn't there, right? At runtime. So the user fires this guy up and says, you know, gosh, I, I wish this thing had a string called host name where I could store its host name, right? Uh, from internet access, you guys know what a host name is. I don't need to explain it to you. So at runtime, so all this GUI is running away, he clicks on, he clicks on edit node and then clicks on like add new property and it automatically pops a brand new property up into this class nodes property object. Now obviously it's not going to save this, not gonna update the class with this at runtime, but it could when you open the file back up, automatically re-add it for you every time. So, because if you can do it during runtime, you can do it, you know, with just an add, and the user clicking on add, you can do it at, at opening the file config, right? Just go populate all the, all the custom properties. And if you think about that, that would allow you, let's just ignore these for the moment, that would allow you to take these guys and say, you know, I want to add, a field called, and I could be the owner. Maybe I could just call this the owner. I'm owner of the Cisco router node, right? And what's nice about this is, is this can be edited with any text, uh, text editor, right? This can be done at runtime. So when you distribute your Mogwai application, you as the coder no longer has to add custom properties that that everybody wants to the code, recompile it, redistribute, do all that stuff. They can go at it themselves. And I think this, this would be very, very powerful. I mean, cause right now, if you think about it, you can take this guy out for a second, cause that won't work, we know. Oh, neither will this. 
But right now, I can take this and go, control C, control V, and I need to change him to a new router. I'll just call him, let's just put him way out there. How about router 50, all right? Index 50. Now, I don't know if this is gonna work. I have not tried this. I mean, it should. And uh, let's see, where can we put them? We'll say at 200. All right, this should work. Now, remember, we have to take the spaces out. Okay, we'll save that. Yeah, I'll run this guy and this may or may not work. I have not actually tried this, so we're, we're gonna try it together. So file open. Oops, test. Oh, uh, <laughs> I took the, oops. I took the host name out of, uh, where is it? The, I, yeah, my bad. See if it was dynamic, it wouldn't look. Let's try that one last time if it doesn't work. Anyway, you, you kind of get the idea of what I'm trying to do here, I think. You know, it's basically where you can change the provisioning of this and change properties that are in the classes at runtime, right? With using just nothing but a text file, users can do it. Oh yeah, see, there we go. Here's our node router 50. So that already works. This is something that the user can go add right now. I mean, this, this works already, right? Don't forget, you can support the network engineering video blog by donation using a credit card and PayPal or by purchasing products at the Muxall store. Details and links are in the description under this video. Well, that's it for this video. If you liked the video, give it a big thumbs up, that helps, and hit the subscribe button, that really helps. If you have any questions or comments, post them in the comments under this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.